da 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 da. Well, please, TED.com, don't sue me. In fact, why not go to TED.com now? It's much better than this rubbish. I really like them. Volatility and solubility. Well, these are the five functional groups that we have to talk about. Let's start off with volatility, and let's start off by spelling it right, shall we? Smash it. All right, then. So volatility uh, is how easy it is for a molecule, uh, some molecules to turn into a gas. So if something has a low volatility, it needs a lot of energy to turn into a gas. Now, by turning it into a gas, you're not breaking the bonds in the molecule, not breaking the intramolecular bonds. No, 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 that would be wrong. You're breaking the intermolecular bonds, the bonds between the molecules. If the bonds between the molecules are easy to break, only requires a little bit of energy to break them, then it's going to turn to a gas easily, and that's, that's called volatile. So the intermolecular forces are what are important here. Are they strong? Are they weak? So the intermolecular forces we have to look at, well, ionic, but arguably, but not in this case, not for this part. Hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole, and van der Waals. The strongest is hydrogen bonds. That requires the most energy to break and will make something the least volatile. Oh, let's draw a Mankini. Why not? That's the strongest. Van der Waals is the weakest. So let me draw out the functional groups for these because you know and I know that you've forgotten them. Let's draw those in. Keto must have three carbons, carboxylic acid. Now looking at these here, you can see that there are two with hydrogen bonds and those are the ones that have strong intermolecular bonds. Hydrogen bond is the strongest one there. So let's look at the volatility. This is relative volatility, of course. That isn't a hydrogen bond in red there, that's a covalent bond. Don't make that mistake. So alcohols have the ability to make hydrogen bonds, so do carboxylic acids. Strong intermolecular forces, needs a lot of energy to break them, so it's a low volatility. Aldehydes and ketones, well they have dipole moments, dipole-dipole interactions, but they're not as strong as the hydrogen bonds. And the halide, well, that uh, has a high volatility, medium to high, because that dipole's the weakest of anything we've seen so far. So if I were to mix them all up together and heat them up, the, the halide will come off first, the alcohol, the carboxylic acid will boil off last. Now looking at solubility, specifically solubility in water. Well, hopefully you remember that like dissolves like. Polar molecules dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar molecules dissolve in non-polar solvents. Now water, that's polar. So the more polar a chemical is, the more likely it is to dissolve. Uh, I know you've forgotten the functional groups even though you saw them a second ago. Not to worry. All right then, so what's the most polar? That's the one that should dissolve the best. Yep, alcohol has hydrogen bonding and carboxylic acid hydrogen bonding, a special sort of dipole. It's a very strong dipole. That has the worst, has the weakest dipole, and the aldehyde and ketone have like an intermediary strength dipole. Now it's a little more sophisticated than that, so let's look at a couple of tricks. But, this question came up a few years ago, very few people got it right. So I've got propan one ol and pentam one ol. Which one's going to dissolve best in water? Well, they're both alcohols, so they both dissolve equally. No, not quite. They both have alcohols, but one has a longer non-polar chain. So it's going to be that one, because it has the shorter non-polar chain. Another sophistication on it is what about fluoromethane compared to chloromethane? which dissolves best in water. Well, the more polar one is the fluoromethane. The difference in electronegativity is greater between carbon and fluorine than carbon and chlorine. And we're done.